Great rig. Great job. How would you like a turn behind the wheel? Hi, my name's Mike Yuva. I'm a key grip in the motion picture industry here in Hollywood, California. I'm also founder of Yuva's Grip Truck and Lighting Service, and I invite you to join me. Welcome to Yuva's Grip Truck and Lighting Service video workshop, The Grip Book. During this video, what I will attempt to do is introduce you to a piece of motion picture film equipment and how each piece works with one another. By the end of this video, with a little practice, you should be able to be on your way to a rewarding career in the motion picture film industry. Let me introduce to you the first piece of motion picture equipment. This is an apple box. This is called a full apple box. This is a half apple box. This is a quarter apple box. And this is an eighth apple box. This is also called a pancake. As you can see, each one is half size of the other. The size of these particular apple boxes, which is the standard size, is a 20 inch by 12 inch by 8 inch. 20 inch by 12 inch by 4 inch by 2 inch by 1 inch. And as you can see, they're all built out of plywood. In this particular case, the quarter apple is hollow, the half apple is hollow, and the full apple is hollow. To prevent crushing, the better built apple boxes have a stiffener that is stuck in the center. This way it doesn't crush. They are also called man makers, sort of an inside joke in the film industry. The most used apple box that I use is the quarter apple box, but I go to a solid type. Here's why. I prefer the solid quarter apple because it takes more of a beating than the hollow type. We constantly will use the quarter apple the solid type, and we'll stick screws, nails, what have you on. In this case, we have what's called a baby plate on here. This is a baby pin, which is attached. It is attached by screws or nails. This is called a junior wall plate. It is attached the same way by the base plate, by screws or nails. When they're in this configuration, the nickname is called a skid plate, our beaver board. Now I'll talk about the baby plate. This particular one is a three inch baby plate. You notice the pin is three inches high. On the baby plate it has a recessed surface so that a light can slide down on and the locking knuckle will lock into. I will demonstrate in a minute. Notice on the baby plate this particular one has four holes and a large hole for putting a bolt through and attaching to some other object. On the baby plate, you'll notice a little hole in the end. This is your safety pin hole. Should you take your baby plate and attach it upside down onto a ceiling? This way you can put a piece of wire through there so the light does not slip off. This last baby plate I'll show you is one with a right angle to it. This is so you can get into a corner, attach it to a wall or a building or stud, and then mount your lamp up on top of it. In this particular shot, I take this angled pin and make a regular baby plate into a right angle baby plate. In this particular baby plate, you'll notice the nut. This is so this pin can detach. The reason that you have a detaching pin is so that you can have these pre-made, but you can go on your truck for storage. When I refer to a baby plate or a baby pin, the size of the pin is 5 8 inch. This is a standard throughout the industry. The next tool I'm going to introduce is the furniture clamp. The furniture clamp is used in this configuration. It is also called a bar clamp. On this particular furniture clamp, we use what is called a bar clamp adapter. Notice how the light attaches to the pin. That pin, once again, is a 5 8 inch baby pin. This is the furniture clamp adapter used on a C-stand configuration setup. This rod that I'm hooking it on is 5 8 inch. This is so that you can attach a light by underslinging. Notice in this configuration, you cannot get any safety pins or wire through the hole. So what we do is we take a piece of rope and put a safety line on it. This is a beadboard holder. And this is how it's used. Notice the wide plate. This allows you a larger surface area 
because this foam can break quite easily. And this is a branch holder. The branch is held in place by the clamping action. This is a C-clamp. Notice the flat face. This is a C-clamp with baby pins with a pipe face. So it can bite into the pipe. This is the pipe face. This is a C-clamp with a junior receiver. This has the standard 1 and 1 8 inch receiver. This particular C-clamp has the pipe face. This is cribbing. It comes in 2 by 4 by 10 inches long or 1 by 3 by 10 inches long. The reason we use 10 inches is so that it will fit inside a legal milk crate. A legal milk crate is something you buy. This is a Kukaloris. It comes in a 4 foot by 4 foot size, a 24 by 36 inch size, and an 18 by 24 inch size. Notice the pattern that it makes on the back wall. Here, I'll shake it up. This is a cup block. Notice the dished out center. I will illustrate how this works later. This is a drop ceiling clip. Notice the 5 8 inch pin with the safety hole in the end. This is your clamping action. This is an articulating flex arm. The knobs here are for loosening so that you can adjust to any oddball position. The clamping action is on the end. The receiving action is for a very small flag. These are called grip clips. They're nothing more than giant metal clothespins. They come in three sizes. The large one is a number three. The middle one is a number two. The small one is a number one. This is a grid clamp. It fits pipe from one inch to two inch. It is held in place by this seven eighths inch nut. This particular grid clamp has a receiver on it, which measures one and one eighth, the standard throughout the industry. It is on an inch and a half outside diameter pipe. This is a grid clamp. It will fit a pipe from one inch to two inch. It is held into place by this nut, which is 7 eighths inch. On this particular grid clamp, it has a baby pin, which is the standard 5 eighths inch. On the end of the baby pin, you have your safety hole. This pin is 5 eighths inch. This pipe size is inch and a half. This is what we call a sound blanket. It's also called a furniture pad. This is a baby offset. It has a receiver which measures 5 eighths inch. On the other end, it has pins, both 5 eighths inch with your safety hole. This is a double baby offset, are called a double header. Notice the pins, 5 eighths inch. Notice the receiver, 5 eighths inch. This is called a triple offset, or a triple header. Notice the 5 eighths inch pin with the safety hole and the receiver, which is also 5 eighths inch. This is called a junior offset. Notice the 1 and 1 eighth inch receiver and the 1 and 1 eighth inch pin, junior offset. This is a baby pipe clamp. It will fit any pipe from 3 quarters inch to 2 and a half inch. It is held in place by this bolt, which is driven in by a half inch. This is the knuckle that will loosen and allow the pin to rotate. There, this is your baby pin, which is the standard 5 eighths inch. There is your safety pin hole. This cable is your safety cable, which attaches to the light. This is a junior pipe clamp. This will fit any pipe from 3 quarter inch to 2 and a half inch. It's held in place by this bolt, which is tightened down by half inch. You turn this knob or knuckle, which will allow this to rotate. This is your junior receiver. This cable is your safety cable that attaches to the light.
This is a chain grip with pins. Notice the tape wrapped around the handles, which will prevent the chain grip from popping open accidentally. Notice how it bites the pipe. This is a set of parallels. This is a taco cart. These are called wedges. These small ones are called camera wedges. This is called an empty frame. What we do with this is apply different types of expendables, which I'll show you later. This particular frame measures 18 by 24. This next frame is 24 by 36. This is one of our larger frames, which is four feet by four feet. Let me show you one of the applications of a four by four frame. Here, we've taken regular black tape and ran it across, which will cause you a shadow effect or a Venetian blind effect, as you can see on the back wall, without actually having the Venetian blind. So this is one of the many applications that we use. Let me show you a different kind of frame that we built ourselves. This is a frame that I've built. It's just a smaller version of the larger ones. In the corner, you'll notice this reinforcing piece of wood. This is called a gusset. You'll have one in each corner. On the sides, I've got baby plates so that we can mount it in a stand. On the other side, I've applied a gel. The gel is held in place by means of tape to which you staple through to prevent the gel from tearing off. This is a sandbag. They come in 15, 25, and 35 pound sizes. This particular bag is filled with shot. Most of the bags, though, are filled with sand. This is a Mafer clamp. Notice the 5 8 inch pin with the safety hole and the end. They look sort of like a C clamp, and they work very similar. It has a rubber tip that will attach to most pipes or flat surfaces. This is a putty knife with a 5 8 inch pin. Notice the little safety hole in the end. This is designed to place a 5 8 inch pin where it is possible only to wedge something, such as a door frame or window seal. This is called a tubing hanger. It will fit any pipe from 3 quarter inch to 2 and a half inch. This is called a sidearm. It's to fit on any pipe that goes from 3 quarters of an inch up to 2 and a half inches. And this is a junior receiver, which is the standard size of 1 and 1 8. This is called a step block or stair block. It will raise a piece of furniture 2 inches, 4 inches, or 6 inches. This is a junior wall plate with the standard size of 1 and 1 8 inch hole. This is called a set wall bracket with the standard receiver of 1 and 1 8 inch. This is a gaffer grip. Notice the rubber teeth for biting with the standard 5 8 inch pin. This is a baby stand extension pin with a 5 8 inch receiver and a 5 8 inch pin with a safety hole. This is a stand adapter pin. It will take a 1 and 1 8 inch receiver and reduce it down to a 5 8 inch pin. This is called a tent peg. We use it to drive into the ground so that we can tie off our ropes to it. This is called a T-bone. It has your standard receiver of 1 and 1 8 inch. This is so that you can bring your light as low to the ground and still work it in its normal configuration. This is a wall spreader. This particular wall spreader receives a two by four piece of lumber. I will illustrate how these work. This is called a high roller. This will extend to a height of 21 feet. On the end, we have what is called a gobo head. On the other side, we have a receiver that old familiar size, one and one eighth inch. This is a C-stand. It will be the most useful tool in the film industry. This is how you open the legs of a C-stand. You grab two of the legs here and pull one toward you. 
Grab one leg, pull the last one toward you. This is the spring-loaded base. This will lock into place. This is the working end of the C-stand. We call these the gobo head. The per this particular size gobo head is two and a half inch in size. It has different receivers or holes that you can stick different size pins in. It also has two plates to which you can put a piece of equipment in there and crank it down. And now I'll show you the operation of a C-stand using a flag. You take the pin in the correct size hole. Notice I'm tightening in a clockwise direction. All the weight is being transmitted in the clockwise direction. This is a tightening action on the stand. Remember this saying, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Knuckles are always on the right, standard throughout the industry. Now that I've got the flag locked in place in the stand, the weight of the flag could cause the stand to fall over. So I apply a sandbag on the back leg, acting as a form of ballast. This is called a flag. It is an instrument or tool that is designed to block light or reduce it. Notice the shadow change on my face. This particular side right here, the fuzzy side, is used to diffuse the light should any light hit it and not bounce into the camera lens. This particular flag is 18 by 24 inch in size. We have several different sizes. This is a 24 by 36 inch standard throughout the industry. This is a four foot by four foot. This particular flag is called a floppy flag. It can change from a four foot flag to a four by eight. This particular flag is long or rectangular in shape. It is still a flag, but they call it a cutter. This particular size is 18 by 48. This flag also has the capability of a floppy. This last flag, our blade, our cutter, I will show you, is called a 24 by 72 inch. This particular flag has the flop capabilities as well. This stand is called a combo stand. This little stand down here is called a low boy stand. They both have the receiver, which is one and one eighth inch. On the newer stands, they have the pop-up five eighths inch pin. If you don't have the pop-up pin, you can use your stand adapter pin like this, sometimes called the spud adapter. With the stand adapter pin or spud adapter in place, I can take a C-stand head or an arm and apply it to the top, giving me a wide base C-stand. Now I would like to introduce to you the grip scrims. This is a lavender, which is color-coded by blue, which will reduce the light about a quarter of a stop. This is color-coded by green, which will reduce the light about a half stop. This is called a single. This one is called a double. It is color-coded by red, and it will reduce the light about a full stop. Now I'll show you diffusion. This is called a silk. It is denoted by a gold edge. The standard sizes of these flags that you see are 18 by 24. As I showed you earlier, the silk the single, the double, and the lavender also come in a 24 by 36 inch size. We also have the single, double, silk, and lavender in a four foot by four foot. This could be a typical setup. A lot of you might see a scene much like this. Then the actor finishes, and gets up and exits. But what you don't see is this. Tell JC we'll take it. Great, thank oh, you, sir. Thank you. Nice 
These are the folks behind the scenes. Now let me show you the equipment. This is balance board, our bead board in action. You notice that it's held in place by a C-stand, properly bagged, and by your bead board holder. Knuckles on the right. That's your cable drop ceiling clip clipped to the rail. This is your drop ceiling clip, 5 8 inch pin holding a light in place and notice that it's safety tied off. This is your drop ceiling clip in action. And right here is the cable which supports the drop ceiling itself. You always want to tie as close as you can to that cable and always tie your safeties off there. Notice the baby offset. In this configuration, the pin, it's underslung. If it was to be on top, it would be a normal configuration. That is a gobel head. Knuckles on the right, tightening action. Wider shot of the same setup. This next shot is your baby offset hanging from a drop ceiling clip. Notice here. Your gobel arm and gobel head. Gobel head, gobel arm, supporting a single. Notice the green. Notice the styrofoam cup. This is to prevent your sprinkler system from automatically coming on. This next setup is what we call a boom setup. Okay, we'll zoom in on the knuckle and you'll notice that the wedge is stuck on the bottom and the board is on the top. This is to prevent the handle or the T-handle from being bent while tightening it down. Notice this rope. This rope is tied to the end of the board to act as a tie off. This is the boom with a C-clamp that's applied on the end of it. Notice the safety ropes are in place on the light. Notice that the rope is applied to the drop ceiling itself. Always safety everything. On the lamp, you'll notice that we have a gel on the door held in place by clothespins, also called C-47s. Notice the knuckle is on the right in a clockwise direction. Then you follow the rod down where the weight is, down here. Now we have a reverse knuckle. The knuckle is still on the right and the pressure is applied because the weight is here. Up here we have a setup with a cider, a shelf, and a net. This is your shelf or bottomer. This is your cider or ear. This is your net. This is a double net because of the red lining. Even though the knuckle is facing down, the weight is still applied out. So in a clockwise direction, it's tightened. You follow it on down, knuckle on the right here, going on down to the end, which part of the stem is sticking out, you have to mark it so nobody can walk by and get accidentally hurt. I use a rebar cover. Your back legs are properly bagged. Following the stem up, you'll notice a baby offset. The baby offset is holding your lamp on. Notice the black wrap on top of the light. This is to prevent any unwanted light from spilling off. It also acts as a heat displacement shield. Notice I can get my hand up there without getting burned. This is your cup blocks in action. This will prevent the base of the chair from moving. Notice a plant held in place. Must be a tall one. Nope. It's held up by an apple box, a full apple on its end. Notice the desk in its normal configuration. We had to elevate it by means of a quarter apple. Notice the calculator. Elevate it so that you can see the keys. This is accomplished by camera wedges. Notice this shiny surface in here. To take that down, we take dulling spray and that will get rid of that. This is a product shot. You'll notice the flex arm here. 
with what is called a finger. It's nothing more than a small flag. Here's your flex arm. And it's attached by means of a clip. The flex arm. This is a foam core setup. Notice the bounce card. White on one side, on the back side is black. So it can be a negative or a positive bounce light. Held in place by C-stands. This is show card. What we've done here is make a sweep or a limbo table. And if you come up to here, you'll notice two pieces of cribbing held in place by means of a C-clamp, held in place by a C-stand head with the knuckles on the right. Notice your camera wedge back at work. This next setup is called a turtle base. The spud adapter will remove from the turtle base, leaving a one and one eighth inch hole. Then you take the spud adapter, install it in the turtle base. Now you have a five eighths inch pin. Then you install your lamp. This is a wall spreader in place. It has carpet on the base of each one of these plates. It is held in place by means of this nut. And you turn it and tighten it, which will spread the plates against the wall. Then you can install your C-clamp, and you're ready to hang a light. This is a pole cat. You should only install a Mafer clamp on a pole cat because of the thin wall tube. You don't want to have this happen. Do not dent it. And this is your locking action. This next segment is on expendables. These are the gels that we use usually on a daily basis. This is a full CTB, a half CTB, a quarter CTB, and an eighth CTB. This is a full CTO, a half CTO, a quarter CTO, and an eighth CTO. This is a 216, this is opal, this is 1000 H paper. This is minus green, and this is plus green. This is gaffer's tape, or grip tape. This is camera tape, or one inch white cloth. This is camera tape, or one inch black cloth. This is two inch black photo matte masking tape. This is JLAR tape. This is sash cord number eight. This is sash cord number four, also called mason line. This is duvetine. It has a flame retardant chemical in it. This is black wrap, a black matte aluminum foil. This is just regular aluminum foil. And this is grip chain, also called sash chain. These are the various sprays we use in the industry. Refer to the grip book for proper use and application. This is how you tie a square knot. You go right over left, twist it once around. You take your right over left again and push it back through. That is a proper square knot. Take the rope over the rail, you run it over this way, then you cross over your rope, then you lift the rope up, slide the rope under, and you have a clove hitch. Notice how that looks. That is a properly tied clove hitch. Take the rope over the rail, around the rail, back across your own rope, around the rail, lift up. Slide your rope end under, pull thus. For lifting a heavy weight, I recommend the bowlin. Take it through, make a loop, take your rope, run it through the hole, around the tree or rope, back down the hole, and then pull.
This is a Fisher Dolly, model 10. This is the back of the dolly. The switch is on the right. The electrical receptacle is on the left. Power must be applied to the dolly to pump up the hydraulic system inside. This receiver will take this plug, which can be powered by 90 to 240 volts AC or DC. Make sure that you use a grounded supply system. This is your off on switch. It will automatically shut off when peak pressure is achieved. Shifting lever. Your shifting lever will come over either up or down as illustrated. That goes into the crab position. That goes into the conventional system. That goes into the roundy round system. The rear, our conventional, is for rear wheels only. The crab is for all four wheel drive, front or sideways. The roundy round, so that the wheels go in opposite directions. This is the brake release. Up is off, down is applied. To fold the steering handle, the brake must be off. Reapply your brake. This is the accumulator pressure gauge. At a predetermined pressure, it will automatically shut the dolly off while being pumped up. Always transport dolly at zero pressure. Caution, always keep this area clear. Any items placed in this area may be damaged when the arm is raised in this well. This is your arm follower. This is how you indicate the height of the arm as it moves. Take chalk, mark it here, here, and here. As the arm moves up, notice that it follows. Now I can come back in and have my second mark. Then I can arm back down. Always hitting my marks. This is the arm going up, the arm going down. If no electrical power can be brought to the dolly and you need a pump up, you take the, one of the lifting levers, remove it from its receiver, come down to this pin right here, apply it on top, and pump fore and aft, fore and aft, several times till you get the pressure so that you can work the arm. Then you remove your pin and put it back in the receiver. Be very careful when transporting the dolly because this sticks out further than the wheels. It is not protected. This is your leveling head. This is how you adjust it to get the head level. This is the proper application of a six inch riser. Notice this key will go into this keyway. This threaded area will hold it in place. You take this nut, come in from the bottom, and tighten it on. This is the camera offset. It's also called a Ubangi. It goes into the hole. There is no key to lock in. You apply the same nut on the bottom, and that locks it into place. This is the rotating camera offset. It's line up your key, like so. Take your gland nut and lock it in from the bottom. The reason this is called a rotating offset is because there's a lever, which I'll bring around, on this side that you can lock. You take this lever, unlock it, pull it around, lock it into place. This next item is a 90 degree plate. And it's held on by the gland nut. This is your lifting bar. We call it the can opener. 
it hooks on to this bar right here, like so. I always use two. Do not use one. One for this side and one for this side. I'm just showing you how it hooks on. This multi-purpose bar is removed and used as a lifting bar in the back. Always have one on each side. Here is your other bar right here. This is in the crab position. To move it, you release the brake. You can go forward or aft. This is what the wheels will do. And go side to side. This is where the term crab dolly comes from. Now, I will go to the conventional position. I release my brake, making sure that my handle is straight. And only the rear wheels will turn. Now, I will go to the roundy round position. I release the brake, ensure that my handles are straight, and I go to the roundy round position. This is one of the most versatile dollies you'll find out in the field. This is the application of the front board. It's also called a pork chop or elephant ear. This is the application of the drop down sideboard. This is both boards on the side. Now you have a working platform on the side of the dolly while you're mobile. This is the application of the high sideboard. This is the application of a high sideboard, only it's longer than the other. They call this the diving board. These letters and numbers on the side of the board stand for high, top, left. The numbers are the serial number of the particular board. This is a 90 degree seat offset. This is a 45 degree seat offset. Do not apply a seat offset in here. Okay. This is the proper way to stick the Fisher 10 dolly on track. Release your brake, making sure that your ramps are in place. Roll up on the first set very slowly and stop there. Lock your brake. These are your track coaster wheels. They come down just like that. Pull over and down making sure that your red lever is pushed down on. I always find it a good practice to lift up on the wheel in case you didn't get a good lock by pressing down hard enough on the red lever. Press down like so. This is a front track platform. It is applied like this. and install your locking pin like so. One pin on each side. This is a seat riser. Notice it has three holes for different heights. You take a pin and install it in the side. For instructional purposes, I will use a nail. This is the Fisher 10, one of the best crab dollies you'll find in the film industry. Each job you work on is like a working resume. It can get you or lose you your next job. I enjoy the personal gratification you get from a job well done. Unlike a lot of jobs, you don't always get to see your end product. Well, I do. Good luck and hope to see you in the field real soon.